Today, I'm gonna to be sharing about a real marriage killer. And that is when you cannot come to conflict resolution with your partner. And what it ends up doing is making you feel alone in your relationship, like your partner doesn't have your back and you are not a team working together. So that was one of the first questions that made me realize there was a real problem in my relationship. It was like, do you ever come up with conflict resolution? If you're feeling stuck in your relationship, that's one of the questions you can ask yourself. Um, meaning, do if you have an argument, do you come up with a solution that you can both agree on? Um, and like I said for me, the answer was no. We never came to an agreement on all the important topics that I would bring up that I needed support on or I needed help around the house or maybe a big decision needed to be made or whatever. Um, a lot of times what would happen is things would be brought up from the past and I would end up defending myself or um, he would just walk out of the room. And so, you know, I just went feeling like my needs and feelings didn't matter. So one of the things that we fought about often was the yard because um, somehow over the years, I ended up mowing the yard and I actually liked to do it it started because my son was struggling with pushing the mower or something, I don't know. And um, I like to mow because it's kind of meditative and you can see your progress as you go. And when you're done, you can see the job is finished. It's all manicured, it looks beautiful. But the one thing I could not do was edge the yard with the weed eater. I just couldn't get the thing started. Um, so my husband would have to do that. And he, you know, just for whatever reason, didn't take the time to do it. He was tired from working or whatever. So I would bring it up and we would end up fighting about something that happened with the kids years ago. And at one point I was like, that happened 10 years ago. And he said, no, it didn't. And I said, yes, it did. And I told the year because it coincided with a big life event. So I remembered the exact year. And he was like, okay, well, maybe so. And so then he would do the weed eating, right? And then in another three weeks, I had the option, do I bring this up again to go through that whole fight again, possibly the silent treatment, or do I just figure out a way to do it myself? And so a lot of times that's what happened. I had to figure out a way to do it myself if I didn't want to have this big argument. And, you know, you can imagine that doesn't make you feel like you have a partner. It makes you feel like you have a, another child or a roommate that you're having to um, stay on their back. Who wants to do that, right? So um, you can't get your needs met if there's no mutuality in the relationship. So like maybe yard work's not his thing, right? And maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But we could come up with a solution together like, pay somebody to do the yard or buy another weed eater that I could start, which is what I ended up doing. Um, or, you know, maybe I do the yard and he takes over a different chore in the house or something like that. But we never could get to that place where we could have that discussion. And I have seven reasons that this could happen in your relationship, seven reasons that you may have trouble uh, resolving conflicts in your own relationship. 
And there are more that I thought of after I wrote these, but that's okay. We'll talk about these because it's seven and that's kind of a lot of information. But um, let's see, I'm just looking at my notes. Okay, so here's one reason. Number one, that you may not have conflict resolution in your relationship. And that is that there's addiction involved. So if your partner is addicted to alcohol or some other type substance, then they are looking for a way to mask their pain and they're not focused on any other thing outside of that. Like they're just barely getting by doing whatever it is they need to do and they physically can't worry about helping you get your needs met. That's number one. Number two, maybe your partner hasn't exactly been faithful. So either you know about them cheating or you suspect something is going on, but either way, you're keeping your needs and feelings to yourself because you're afraid that if you bring up problems, your partner will leave you for someone else. So uh, that could just be another reason that you just don't get conflicts resolved because you're afraid to bring it up. So as I'm listing these, comment below in the comments about some of the things that you come up with that are reasons that you can't resolve conflict in your relationship because we can help each other. You never know, there may be someone out there that struggles with the same thing as you and they don't know that there are other people that have the same problems in their relationship. So we can help each other out. And also, while you're there, like and subscribe and share this video with anybody that you know may be struggling with their relationship as well. They could use this information. Okay, number three, they control the finances. So if your partner controls all the finances, like maybe they're the one with the paying job and you're the one that stays home taking care of the home or the kids or whatever, or maybe their job makes more money than you. Um, whatever the reason, you've turned the financial responsibility over to your partner and, or maybe even he just took control of the finances because he's that type of person that's controlling or she, whichever. Um, and you know they will not agree to certain things because either they're tight with money or they don't agree that that's a need. Um, they scrutinize every expenditure. They threaten to take money away from you and therefore your security. And so you are afraid to bring up certain needs and feelings to them because your security is involved, your safety, and that's scary to you. So that could be another reason that you're not resolving conflict in your relationship. Number four, this is when they agree with you, but there's no follow through. So I'll just use the argument with my ex, um, that I talked about before with the yard. So let's say that I came to him and I said, uh, hey, I can't get the weed eater started. I really need your help with this. The grass is growing over the curb. And he said, yeah, you're right. I really need to take care of that. I'll do that as soon as I can. I, you're so right. It looks terrible when the grass is growing over like that. Okay. And then he never goes out and does it. So what that does is it makes you doubt the trustworthiness of your partner. It may seem like kind of a small way that they're being dishonest, but 
really it's a huge thing because if you can't trust your partner when they're saying, yeah, I'll do the yard, then can you really trust them when they say they're gonna take care of the taxes or they're going to pay a bill or they're going to do something important for the children? You know, it just makes you not trust and you have to have trust with your partner in order to have a healthy marriage. So number, I believe we're on number five, they fight dirty. So if your partner fights dirty, meaning they name call, they bring up all your mistakes from the past, or they bring up things that you're ashamed of, then that's fighting dirty and you can't trust your partner when they're fighting dirty. You can't feel safe bringing up your needs and feelings when they fight dirty. A lot of times this can look like um, the tactic that narcissistic people use, which is called DARVO. And that's where they deny, they first deny there's a problem, then they attack you, and then they reverse victim and offender. So that can look like oh, going with the yard thing. Um, you never told me that I needed to help with the yard. You never do the yard great. You're, you're terrible at mowing. You mow uneven and it looks awful. That's the attack part. And then reverse victim and offender. Like, I, here I am working so hard and making money to pay our bills and you're coming at me with yard stuff. Like, it's so important. You know, that's turning themselves into a victim. So, fighting dirty is a really difficult thing and it's really difficult to have a healthy marriage when your partner fights dirty. And if you fight dirty too, that you could be doing some of the same things. So take that into consideration. And then, um, are we on number six? Yes. Number six, they refuse to have a discussion about problems. So that could look like they walk out of the room, they change the subject, they, um, like, have you ever had an argument with someone and you're talking about, we'll go with the yard thing again, you're talking about the yard and then all of a sudden they're talking about how you didn't do the dishes last week when they asked you to. So no longer are you talking about the yard, that's the real problem. You're talking about the dishes, that's a totally different issue. So the yard can't get resolved because they're changing the subject. So um, they could also be making excuses about why they can't talk about this problem at this time. I'm too tired, I'm too hungry, I just got home from work, give me a break, whatever. They get out of arguments by just totally avoiding it whatsoever. And you never can come to conflict resolution when they do that. Okay, number seven, this is probably the worst one. This is where you just give up trying. You are tired of arguing. You're tired of bringing things up that they avoid. And you're just knowing, you know that no matter what you do, your needs are not going to get met. So. You, you just stop bringing them up completely. You just feel like it's not worth the energy. So what happens is you end up being like polite roommates with your partner and you don't act like teammates at all. And by the time you get to this point, then um, your relationship is probably on its way out unless something drastic happens. Um, so, sorry to give you the bad news. <laughs> um, so, you can see how damaging it can be if there's no conflict resolution. Uh, 
you and your partner can learn to be better communicators. Like, you know, saying like, if you're the person that fights dirty or you both fight dirty, you can learn to bring up your needs in a healthy way and a clear way. And your partner can learn to reflect back to you and um, try their, to do their part, but you both have to be willing to try. And, you know, chances are, if you are watching this video, you've probably tried some things. You've probably read some books. You've probably watched some videos. You've probably listened to some podcasts and you're willing to do your part. I mean, you wouldn't watch this whole video if you weren't. Um, but is your partner, that's the thing, is your partner willing to do their part? And you have to give them the opportunity to do their part. So if they don't realize that you're really struggling and you haven't talked to them in a clear way, saying, this is what I need. I notice when we have an argument, this happens. I don't feel like you have my back. This is what I need to see out of you. And you need to be really clear, like get them to tell you, what are you willing to do to work on this problem with me? Are they willing to get a book? Are they willing to go to counseling? Are they willing to um, seek some type of support from a coach or clergy member or a therapist or a mentor in the community? Um, and then here's what you have to do or what you should do. I shouldn't say what you have to do, but so set aside a time to talk to your partner and talk to them let them know your feelings, have them sign a paper. You can just write out a contract like, you know, I agree to do blah, blah, blah by this date and give them a date that this has to be done in six months time or whatever you choose. Six months is a pretty good amount of time to see some real change. Uh, if you said something like one month, you you may or may not see some change in a month, but that's not a lot of time. So six months is a, is a good time frame and it will go fast. Um, and then when that time comes, look and see, have they really done the work? They said they were going to, but have they actually done something about changing whatever it is. So, you know, I'm trying to think of some examples of like, you know, you want them to spend more time with the kids. Have you seen evidence that they are really trying to spend more time with the kids? Or you want date night, you want to have a more intimate relationship. Do you see evidence that they are working on creating more intimacy in your relationship, or you want help with things around the house, are they really taking action to help you around the house? Perhaps you want them to get a job. Are they actually sending out resumes, um, you know, putting in the effort to get the job? Are they going on job interviews? Whatever it is. So, you know, if you don't see evidence in that six months time, well, let me say this first. I said to do, you could do a contract, but you don't have to do that. If you feel like your partner wouldn't sign something, something like that, or that would make them more angry or whatever, you know your partner better but you could just write it down for yourself. So you could just go into your phone or a private file and say, I need to see these three things by this date. 
mark it six months in advance. And if you don't see any effort towards that, then you have a decision to make. You still have a choice and your choices are you're going to make compromises and you're going to take care of whatever it is yourself. So like I told you before, the yard thing, I took it into my own hands. I went and bought a cordless weed eater that I could start myself with just a button and I did the yard by myself. Was I happy about that? No. Did I have resentment? Yes, I had a lot of resentment. So uh, for me, that was like one of the things that it wasn't the thing that ended my relationship, but it was one of the things that led to um, my unhappiness. It wasn't just the yard, that's not that important. But there were lots of little things like that that we couldn't agree on. So um, if you are not seeing a real change, then most likely you would be happier if you left that relationship. And, you know, that's really harsh to think about, but like, there's usually not just a problem that you can't solve like the yard. There's usually other things like raising the kids or um, having um, intimacy together. Like, you, you know, are you spending time together, really bonding and talking? There's huge things that we deal with in our relationships and you know, if your partner is not willing to meet you halfway and willing to come up with some kind of compromise that you both agree on, then you're not going to be happy together. So that either looks like you being the one making all the compromises or you end the relationship. So anyways, I hope that helps. That's a really difficult thing to look at with your relationship, I understand that. Uh, it's really hard for me. It's really hard for everybody that goes through that. But in a healthy relationship, your partner will meet you halfway because they want you to be happy. They wanna be happy and they want you to be happy. So every now and then there's probably one or two things that you won't agree on, but hopefully, those are not the important things that make your partnership worthwhile. Um, so let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you struggle with, with conflict resolution with your partner, and if that ended your relationship in the past with somebody you had a partnership with. And uh, even let me know if you came up with a solution together, like, you know, you were really struggling over something, but you came up with a solution together. I'd love to hear about that too. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.